So welcome to uh, the Human Dimensions Open Data Challenge uh, presentation. Uh, my name is Félix Antoine Fortin. I'm from uh, Calcul Québec, Université Laval, and today I'm leading this call to uh, present you actually what is uh, the Human Dimensions Open Data Challenge that was uh, that is uh, built in partner uh, with with some of the partners that are Shirk, Compute Canada. Ontario Centers of Excellence and Think Data Workers. Uh, today, our call agenda is quite straightforward. Uh, first, we'll have a quick overview of what is the actual challenge. Then we'll see how uh, participants who haven't been already to the registration process, how you can actually register to the challenge. Uh, then we'll see uh, what uh, what what is the part of Compute Canada in all this is uh, by actually providing you some compute power. So Ryan will give you a quick demo of how you can access the cloud and what sort of resources are available to you. Then uh, we'll give the mic to the, the guys from Think Data. We'll show you how you can actually uh, access some of the uh, Ontario Center of Excellence data that was uh, curated for, for that challenge. So really, what is all about the Open Data Challenge? Uh, SHRC has uh, identified six key challenges that, uh, might, uh, that, that, of, that are of interest for Canada's futures. And one of these challenges is uh, the challenge that actually takes root in one of these, these six questions. And one of that question was, what effects Will the quest for energy and natural resources have on our society and on the world stage? So basically, the overview of the challenge is states as, as uh, what data, technology, or process initiative will mitigate or address critical business policy and social challenges in Canada's natural resources and energy sector through 2035, and that data and technology part of the challenge is really uh, what, what matters here and where, why we are, uh, why Compute Canada is actually involved in that challenge. So what we are providing first actually is data, then we are also providing compute power and techno technical expertise. And what we have in mind essentially is we want you, uh, the participant, to build, crunch, model, or argue, or Whatever you want to do, actually, with that open data we are providing you in order to develop and share insight into, uh, on, on the, the, the preceding question and regarding mostly uh, the problematics that are community engagement, HR, mobility gaps, sustainability, or skill and competencies as it matters to uh, Canada's natural resources and energy sector to, to, to 2035. So what, what really matters here is that even if you don't have the actual technical expertise, that's where Compute Canada uh, can get involved. And those data that you, we are providing, uh, there is no direct question as how you should or what question you should answer it. Really what we want you to do is uh, build some form of either an interesting research paper or uh, even a, an app or a web application that is actually giving, giving us insight on the, uh, on the question that has been asked by Shirk. Now, in order to uh, access uh, all of these data and uh, actually uh, get involved in the challenge, first you need to uh, get a Compute Canada account and then register your team. Now, what you need to know is uh, on the web page description of the challenge, you have bo both links are clearly identified and on how you, and all of the process is explained on how you can actually get a Compute Canada account and how you can then register your team. Once you have both of these, uh, you can then uh, access actually Compute Canada Cloud. So you get to choose your operating system. And I need to stress this out. Uh, there is no need for you to actually use Compute Canada Cloud. These are resources that are available to you, but they are not mandatory to actually uh, complete the challenge. Uh, so we are actually uh, providing two flavor of Linux uh, for you on the cloud, uh, Ubuntu or CentOS, but you could also have 
access to actually a Windows Server. And if you want to use any other uh, operating system or uh, software that you have license for, uh, you, we can uh, set things up for you. There, there's no problem there. But by default, you will need to create a VM in one of the flavor that we have identified, and then you will be able to, uh, to change it afterward. By default, uh, each team has actually a single virtual machine, but then you will be able to uh, split those resources that are uh, provided to you, and the actual details of those resources are also on the website. Uh, you will be assigned a technical expert, so one of the uh, one of Compute Canada analysts, generally uh, one of probably uh, a technical expert that is in the consortia, which is the closest to your actual uh, your your, uh, your your site or your university, uh, will be assigned to you. Or uh, it could be also a technical expert that has already uh, been in contact with you. Uh, this should be able, as uh, for the uh, actual resource uh, hardware and cloud resources, you are not. It is not mandatory to actually have and use this technical expertise, but we string uh, we strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, finally, as for the registered team, uh, the team lead must be either a faculty or a librarian at Canadian at a Canadian institution and must belong to a department, division, or whatever that is within the humanities and social sciences. That means that you could have, for example, a physicist, uh, a physicist with part of your team, but it couldn't be part, uh, it couldn't really lead that team. So you can have uh, pluridisciplinary uh, teams, but uh, you must actually have at least the, the, the lead, team lead must either be a uh, a librarian or a uh, faculty member of a uh, humanities and social sciences uh, division or department. Now, next, I'm going to uh, pass the mic to Ryan, who will uh, give you a quick demo on how you could actually access the cloud and how you can uh, set up your VM in order to uh, complete the, and complete the challenge, if you uh, if you'd like. Oh, all right. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm Ryan Inge. I'm an assistant man at the University of Victoria, and I'm on the Compute Canada Cloud team. And so uh, what I'm showing you here is the, um, the web page. Uh, once, you're, once you've signed up uh, to be part of the Open Data Challenge and you've been approved, uh, you'll get a, an email confirming that uh, you've been approved for the challenge, and uh, then you can visit the CCDB. Uh, note that this is a development version uh, of the website, so um, just for just for this uh, demonstration. Uh, so what we can see here is that um, you'll you'll see what operating system you've chosen. Uh, you'll see the IP address of your uh, virtual machine that's been booted for you, as well as the username. As you scroll down the page. Uh, you'll get slightly different, um, uh, slightly different. Oh, just one sec here. You'll get slightly different um, depending on if you're Windows or Linux. So for Windows, you have to log in using a password. Uh, for Linux, you'll be logging in using an SSH key. Uh, for the purpose of the, uh, the cloud, we prefer that, um, especially for Linux, that you're going to use uh, an SSH key. It's a lot more secure and less prone to uh, your VM being compromised. Uh, so right now, I'll just show you a quick. Um, so if I here's the the password that you're going to see once you expose it. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is um, just do a quick login to the uh, Windows VM here. Let me just change my screen. Okay, so now I'm doing this from within inside uh, a Windows VM. So I'm going to start up the uh, remote desktop uh, client, and so I'm going to connect to the IP address that's shown on the on the web page, yeah, using the username ODC2016 and the password that I copied from the web page. So now we're connected into the Windows VM. Um, by default, we install uh, a few different pieces of software. 
so we're installing uh, Google Chrome for a web browser. We're installing our Studio server, sorry, our Studio desktop on the Windows uh, instance. We're installing Python, uh, and we're installing a, a, a Windows LAMP stack, so Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Um, you'll have administrative rights on your Windows VM, so you can install whatever software you want. Uh, note that uh, when it comes to Windows, only uh, the same user can only log in once uh, via our remote desktop. If someone else tries to log in with the same account from remote desktop, that other user will get kicked off. So what you can do is you can create another user account uh, and then have that user log in using a different user account. Um, with this version of Windows, we're limited to two simultaneous remote desktop sessions at any given time. So now I'm just going to go and show you the Linux. Uh, also, John just mentioned that we can uh, we can double click the screen, uh, my sh my sharing screen, so that you can. Uh, see it in full screen instead of seeing it in a small window with inside the video client. Okay, so here is a, an example of a, a Linux application for the Open Data Challenge. So we can see that the operating system chosen here is CentOS and the tenant IP <clears throat> listed here. Now the username is the same between Windows and Linux. And as I mentioned before, now we have to provide uh, an SSH key to gain access to the VM. So all you want to do is copy this key. If you're familiar with the uh, uh, with Linux and SSH keys, this should be quite straightforward. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to create create an SSH key. So basically, I'm just pasting the content uh, that I copied into a into a file, and then what I'm going to do is do an SSH to that VM <coughs> using the SSH key that I just generated. So now there I'm logged into the VM. I'll just point out a few quick things. So we've installed the uh, Globus client. Uh, so this will allow you to transfer data in and out of your VM using Globus. Uh, there's, there is some steps that have to be done to, uh, to do this, um, which is all documented on the um, Compute Canada website. Uh, so for this VM, we've installed RStudio server. We've installed uh, Python. Uh, uh, IPython Notebook, Jupyter, uh, R, uh, uh, standard LAMP stack, so Apache MySQL and PHP, and you have full pseudo access on this VM, so you can install your own software, and depending on if you're CentOS or Ubuntu, it'll be apt to get or uh, yum install, um, so hopefully you choose the operating system that's most familiar with you. Um, and I think that's everything on that. Now, as Felix mentioned, we do have the ability to get a um, Compute Canada Cloud account, and this will give you direct access to the OpenStack uh, dashboard. So um, depending on your level of expertise, you may want to just choose to use the VM that we've provided. Uh, if you decide that you want a more elaborate um, virtual machine infrastructure, like maybe you want multiple VMs that are maybe smaller in size, or you want to, you want to put your own OS, um, we can definitely accommodate this. So your options are to get a Compute Canada Cloud account or to discuss it with your mentor and they can help you through that process. So this is an, just the OpenStack dashboard. Um, so <clears throat> these are the resources that each um, uh, contestant will, will, each group will be provided with. So you can boot up to two instances with up to 10 virtual CPUs and up to 15 gigs of memory and we're by default allocating 100 gigs of, of storage. So from the, <clears throat> the instance menu, you can see that this is the Windows VM that we're running right now that I logged into earlier. Uh, you have the ability uh, to launch different VMs, shut down this VM. Um, so when you launch an instance, you can give it whatever name you choose. You can pick a flavor that will fit with inside your quota, and then you can select um, you can select different images to boot from. So we have some available for, by default, but you also have the ability to upload your own image, as I mentioned earlier. Um, one other thing I will mention 
is that by default, we are opening up access to your RDP or SSH, depending on what OS you're using, to the world. That means you can access your VM from anywhere. Uh, if you decide to deploy like a web service, then you'll need to open up, for example, port 80 for Apache. So what you have to do is um, you can either request, you, you would request that through your mentor. Uh, but if you do have access to the OpenStack dashboard, then you can also do it yourself uh, through the security rules by just simply adding a new rule. Uh, you could pick, say, HTTP, and you can allow it to be open from the world. And I think that's all I have to say about that. I think I'll pass it on to back to Felix. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, just to complete just uh, what Ryan just said, uh, if at any point of the process you are actually unsure whether what is SSH, what is an SSH key, what is Globus, or uh, you want to know more about OpenStack, I strongly encourage you to actually contact your uh, technical expert that was assigned to you, who will then be able to help you. And if you, uh, Compute Canada Cloud is a quite a new service, so we are definitely interested in having your input on uh, the usage of that. So, so feel free to now, read through this. Uh, we've created a pretty extensive guide about how to use uh, Numara.io. Uh, Numara is a platform that we have built that aggregates open data. Um, or, or any data for that matter, particularly in this case. Um, this is more custom data that's kind of built directly for this particular hackathon. Um, so we're obviously very excited to be part of this event um, and we're really excited for you guys to um, get access to this and really excited to see what kind of comes out of it. Um, through the step-by-step -step guide, we'll kind of show you how to get started from not having any data at all to 100 or so data sets that will help you out. Um, so we have, along with this, there is a link to and how to document that's quite extensive about how to exactly use Namara and every, all its little features that will make your life a lot easier. Uh, but we're going to concentrate right now on just using it for this particular hackathon. Um, so the first step kind of here is to kind of, is to visit Namara and create an account. Um, so it's just uh, Namara.io. Um, and you can click the sign up button here to go and create an account. Um, we already have one for this particular purpose, so we won't do this uh, right now to save some time. Um, but the basic process is it's like any sign up form, fill it out, there'll be a confirmation email. Click on that and then you're, you're in. Um, all right, and then from here, uh, create an account, so we're on step three here. Create account, we've confirmed it. Um, we can have a look around, start searching, but you might be more interested in just diving into the data that we've kind of hand curated for this particular event. Um, and to get all access to all of this, effectively you just have to click on this link. Um, this will basically subscribe you to all these custom data sets that have been put together. Um, it just takes a second to go and run through that. You'll get a little message here just saying it's successful. And then if you go back to your account um, and click on collections, you should see the, the collection created for you there automatically. Um, if you don't, just try and refresh the page. And if you're still having any troubles, um, feel free to email us. There is a, oh, I always do this. There is a, email here that we will be responding to if you run into any problems. Um, from there, you can kind of just click into this collection. Uh, this will present you with an API key um, that you are able to use to access any of the uh, data sets via the API, or if you want to just browse through them to the platform, um, that's obviously more than doable as well. Uh, we can talk about the data a little bit here. Um, so basically what we did was we uh, put together a broad list of data that sort of covers all of Canada in some sort of capacity. So uh, given the actual problems and questions that, we'll be, that the challengers of the Human Dimensions Challenge will be facing, uh, what we did was we focused on um, socioeconomic impact, uh, specifically data about uh, Aboriginal land claims uh, and also Aboriginal um, communities across Canada. 
So a lot of the base layer data that's included in this uh, 100 or so data sets is actually just uh, really relevant information uh, outlining the socioeconomic uh, layout of, of Canada from coast to coast. Uh, on top of that, we decided to uh, go after a few economic sectors based on regions. So uh, West Coast, we focused on oil and gas. Um, Ontario, Quebec, we focused on mining. Um, and then mostly all of the East Coast, we also covered a lot of, a lot of forestry. So that's sort of where we initially uh, cast the net in order to build this original catalog of data, because a lot of this stuff is really relevant to, um, to the questions that are being posed through the, through the Human Dimensions uh, hackathon. Um, also, we've added a layer of environmental data, so just uh, anything to do with environmental impact, studies, all that sort of stuff for any of the regions that these economic uh, zones uh, overlap with. Um, the catalog itself is sort of based on the high value data that we think um, is really going to be the base layer of, of information needed in order to start uh, addressing a question or coming up with a, a solution. Um, there's also a lot of data we can add to this uh, that we haven't included here particularly, uh, but we do have the ability to work with the teams and, uh, and get them particular data based on whatever questions they're working at. So by all means, look through the catalog here. We'll also be providing a summary of the data that we put together. Um, if any of the teams are looking for anything in particular, um, or a completely different topic that we didn't cover on our initial uh, our initial spread, uh, reach out to that same support at namar.io um, contact information, and we'll get in touch with you directly and work through what we can do to sort of help you out and get your hands on what you need to uh, from a data perspective. Right on. Um, so kind of just get to back to where we left off here on on getting started with the platform. Um, we had just got our API key. Um, we have a listing of all the data sets that are included in this collection. There's, there's quite a few of them and you can just kind of keep scrolling and load more as, they, as needed. Um, you can pop into any one of these directly. Um, and these will load up. Um, there's full query capabilities inside um, the table itself, so you can kind of get a quick run through of exactly what this table looks like before you, and it gives you the ability to kind of play around with it and answer some basic questions before you try and um, do a deep dive in it yourself. Um, there's also very extensive documentation on how to use all of these tools and the how-to guide that's linked here, as well as search and filtering, etc. cetera. Um, also, one quick tip. Um, for anyone, if you, if you are curious about a particular API call and, 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 how to, and how to perform it yourself, you can always use the table as an example. So say maybe I wanted to, well, this was actually set up as a number field by mistake. Um, I apologize for that. I'll have to see what happened there. Um, but you can, you can perform any filters on this table um, here and kind of get an idea of, of what happens. Let's just try picking it up. That's the same one. What are you trying to do? Um and you can kind of perform any sort of queries in the table itself. And um, uh, sorry, guys, this isn't my computer, so it's not quite there. And you would be able to see the exact um, request that is being made and kind of use that as a guide to how to make the request yourself. Um, as well as you would check out the API documentation. Um, which there's a link to right here. Um, there's full documentation on how to perform just about every query that is doable, and it's quite extensive as well. And then also feel free to reach out with us if you're having any troubles. Um, lastly, we have a small, a very small little demo just to show the process of going from taking your API key and actually using it for a particular app. Um, we have this code pen demo here. Um, which we can go into one of our collections that have been created. 
get our API key. And oops, this one here. And paste that right in. Um, and this basically just goes and grabs a particular data set um, and lists it on this page. Very simple, but it does show the, the full complete access of, of using the API directly to do something with it. And just a quick question. Uh, if, for example, I'm used to work with files in Excel, can I download some of these data set directly on my computer? Um, yes, you, you could you could just download them directly through um, the source tabs. Excellent. And then um, that's kind of the the gist of what, what we've uh, what we've prepared here. Um, this documentation will be available for everyone, so you can go through it on your own as well. Um, we have provided an email link here, so uh, feel free to reach out if you run into any problems. A quick wrap up here. Uh, if you are actually interested, you don't know if you are interested in uh, taking part of that challenge before actually registering uh, to for a Compute Canada account and uh, setting up VMs. You can actually access directly the uh, the data sets uh, you on and register for an account on Memoro IO mm -hmm. and go through the uh, that how to that the, the thing data just just showed us. So you can you can look at the data and find out where uh, whether you are actually interested in the challenge. Uh, so that's I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you everyone who uh, participated to, uh, to the the call and thanks to Ryan and Think Data for showing us uh, the cloud and how we can use Namara.io to uh, access the data. Are there any questions? It's not required that you use those open data sets, if I understand. I mean, if uh, any data we could get it put up on uh, Namara. And it, is, uh, it is not mandatory to actually use that data, but uh, I think it has to be open data. Right. So that data has to be accessible to, uh, to other, for example, to other, other participants of the challenge or anyone who would be interested in actually running your code or uh, your application. Right. If there, is, uh, if there is particular data that you're interested in getting your hands on, uh, feel free to send us a note and we can, uh, we can run it through our platform to, build a, to basically provide an API to make it easier to deal with. Uh, but again, we can take that offline if there's a particular data set or particular issue that you're, uh, that you're thinking. Uh, we sort of define what we're going to try to do. Is that yeah, like, you have a lot of freedom to actually present us and give us uh, clever insights on how, how how you can work with that data and present us an interesting application, mostly using yeah. and you you can use the uh, the raw computing power we are providing you in order to achieve that. <laughs>